Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Aaron Norton, a licensed mental health counselor, licensed marriage and family therapist, and a board certified addictions counselor. In this video, I'm going to address the question, what do I do if my friend is drunk? I was asked to record this video for a group of high school students, but I think it can also be helpful for college students or for anyone looking for some basic information on how to help. I'm going to talk about red flags and yellow flags. Red flags are signs of a medical emergency. When you see a red flag, you should call 911. Yellow flags are signs that your friend is intoxicated, but not necessarily experiencing an emergency. You should be cautious about yellow flags. Let's start with red flags, which include signs that your friend may have overdosed on alcohol or might be experiencing an emergency called alcohol poisoning. According to the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism, alcohol poisoning is what happens when there's so much alcohol in the bloodstream that areas of the brain controlling basic life support functions, such as breathing, heart rate, and temperature control, begin to shut down. The signs of alcohol poisoning can be remembered with the acronym MUST HELP, which was developed by an organization called AWARE Awake Alive to help teens recognize the signs of alcohol poisoning. The M stands for mental confusion. A person might be confused about a lot of things when their alcohol level is too high, such as where they are, who you are, and what's happening to them. The U stands for unresponsive. For example, your friend might not respond when you're talking to them, shaking them, or even pinching their skin. The S stands for snoring or gasping for air. The T stands for throwing up or vomiting. H stands for hypothermia, meaning that your friend's body temperature is very low. E is for erratic breathing. Breathing might be slower than usual, such as eight or fewer breaths per minute, and there might be lapses in breathing, meaning that more than 10 seconds go by without a breath being taken. L stands for loss of consciousness. P stands for paleness or blueness of skin. If you see those signs of alcohol poisoning, you should call 911. While you wait for help to arrive, you should gently turn your friend over on their side into what's called the Bacchus Maneuver Position. You raise the arm that's closest to you above your friend's head, gently roll them towards you while guarding their head from hitting the floor, and then allow their head to rest in front of their arm, not on it. You then tilt their head up for better airflow and tuck their nearest hand under their cheek to help maintain their head tilt and raise their face off the floor. This maneuver is used to help them to breathe and to prevent them from choking on their own vomit, which can be deadly. I know that maneuver might sound complicated, but it's not. You might want to Google the term Bacchus Maneuver Position and watch some video demonstrations so that it makes more sense to you. Now, I know that you might be afraid to call 911 because you don't want anyone to get in trouble, but alcohol poisoning is serious. People die from it. Sometimes you have to do something difficult to protect your friends. And this may be one of those moments. If your friend is a good friend, they'll probably thank you for it later. Now let's talk about yellow flags, which are less serious. What if your friend is intoxicated, but you don't see any signs of alcohol poisoning? If your friend is conscious and responsive, check on them often to make sure they're okay. Make certain that they stay on their side and not on their back. If you're going to touch them, tell them exactly what you're going to do before you do it. Sometimes when people are intoxicated, they don't understand what you're doing, and so they might respond with fear or anger. Try to remain calm and firm. If they're out in the sun, get them in the shade. If they're in a cold place, try to get them to a warmer spot with a blanket. Don't give them food, drinks, or medication. The only thing that truly sobers someone who's drunk is time. Don't let a friend drive or do other things that could lead to an accident when they're drunk. If you hear slurred speech or can see that they're unsteady or imbalanced, then they're obviously impaired and they shouldn't be driving. Think of how you're going to help them to not drive. You might order an Uber or a taxi. You might invite them to sleep over. If you haven't been drinking, you might offer to give them a ride. 
Even better, if you and your friends are going to be drinking, make arrangements ahead of time to make sure no one's going to be driving afterwards. Lastly, if you're worried that your friend could have a problem with alcohol, then talk to them about it when they're sober. Don't lecture them and judge them. Just tell them that you're worried about them. Explain why you're worried about them. Be specific and let them know about some resources if they want help. You might find out about those resources from your campus counseling center, uh, including resources in the community. Don't feel discouraged if they shrug off your advice or respond defensively. You've planted a seed and that seed might grow days, weeks, months, or even years later, especially if other people who care about your friend are also talking to them about it. I posted some links for additional information in the description of this video. I hope this is helpful and I wish you and your friends good health and happiness.